time to cross back to Leanne in Mozambique and uh, we are going to take you there. Uh, she's of course looking at the situation in um, Nampula province where she was yesterday. Um, oh, Maratane, did you say that's the name of the refugee camp you're in today, uh, Leanne? And of course, so much to show us in terms of just uh, looking at the refugee situation in and around Africa and of course this one rather close to home in neighboring Mozambique and Leanne is at the Maratane refugee settlement to cast the spotlight on the situation there so let's go back to Leanne and find out what she has for us now Leanne Yeah, indeed. And that's, and that's, I think, what the, the scary situation is. I mean, we're talking about a neighboring country here that is facing its own issues and major issues. I mean, and I think that's something we're going to delve deeper into tomorrow when we try and make our way as close to Cabo Delgado as we possibly can. So we'll actually be coming to you from um, the bridge that the, the, the desperate people that are living in Cabo Delgado actually cross to get into Nampula province. So uh, I think the biggest issue here in Mozambique is certainly the inter internally displaced people. That is, that goes without say, because what we saw in terms of how they are living and the conditions that they have to live in in their own country is something absolutely desperate. But today we're focusing in on the refugees and there are about 30,000 refugees that live in Mozambique and Maritane refugee camp has got around 7,000 of them that are here. They've been here for many, many years. I mean, you heard from our last guest who, who basically has lived his entire life here and uh, the prospect of ever leaving and going back to his country is not, not too good. But I just wanted to show you, this is the normal day-to-day -day life within the refugee camp. It is very hot. I, I, the, the heat is something that is almost unbearable. I mean, the sweat just pours off you. It is absolutely devastatingly hot. And as you can see, I mean, this kind of land and the, 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 because the government does, of course, allocate the land for the refugees to stand on or to stay on. And then the UNHCR comes in and, and assists with setting up and giving provisions for the refugees to survive. But I mean, you can't really grow anything here, can you? I mean, you can see this. This is the kind of terrain that they're on. So to try and, and grow, there are farms that they have little sort of allocated a bit further away um, from here but in this particular land the chances of growing things are not very good is it so and the water situation well I mean let's talk about that so within the camp there are around about 12 boreholes and we're here next to one of the boreholes and you can see this is the morning rush everybody's coming to get their water in the morning uh, pumping it from one of the boreholes here so the children the moms the dads whoever it is they come with their canisters and they pump their water and this is sort of how they go about their daily activity I mean we see them uh, taking their baths washing over here as well and uh, then taking it back to to their respective homes I mean you can see that lady over there just carrying on her head with the two buckets and her baby on her back I mean if that that picture just kind of really talks to the face of what goes on um, within Africa I mean this is this is this is in general the, the, the what you see but here in the refugee camp this is a, a very common occurrence and this is something that we do see as I say, a lot of the communities that are here are from the Democratic Republic of Congo, from Burundi and from uh, South Sudan as well, and Rwanda. Those are predominantly who you do find here. Now, the, the, the good news is, is that the influx of refugees into this camp is, we don't have the exact numbers at this point. I, I just kind of asked the question now, so we don't have those numbers, but what they can confirm is it's nowhere near anywhere where it used to be. The point is, is that, the situation for refugees has kind of settled down and those that are here have made this their home but again as I've mentioned the chances of them going home is not too good but this brings me to my next guest and I want to uh, speak to him because this is a gentleman who again has also been living here for about 17 16 17 years this is his home uh, but his real home is Burundi and he's here to talk to us as well, just to tell us his story and to tell us what he's doing. And it's uh, Ntakuruti Mana. Good to have you on the show. Hello, yeah. bon dia. Bon dia. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I am so, I'm so good and I'm so grateful that you're speaking to us today. Thank you for speaking to us. I try. Yeah. 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 And, you, and your English, you yesterday you're telling me your English is not good. It's good. It's good. No, good. I'll try. It's good. <laughs> so you've been here now for 16, 15, 16 years? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. So, yeah. 
Where in Burundi did you live? I live in 2008. Yeah, yeah 2008. Okay. And wh where were you living? Uh, I moved in Burundi in 2007, so I'm going to reach here in 2008. Okay. Yeah. So I know your parents were killed um, in Burundi, yeah. and you decided you've, you've got to leave. But it took you one year to get here. How did you get here? What did you walk? What was your story? Yeah, the to reach here was very difficult because I walk from Burundi to here. I get one year on the way because I must not have money for transport. I must not have the support. There is any support, so I just walk. He ask the help until when I come to to reach here. Did did you leave there? I mean, you were in your early twenties, but did you walk on your own? Did you come with someone? No, by yourself. I live myself. You left by yourself. And where did you find you stayed? Did you just sleep in the bushes and wake up and carry on walking? Another time, I was, I'm, I'm not sleeping in the, in the bush. Another time, when by the church, ask the help by the church. Another people, by the way, they had, they was helping me to give me some some place for to sleep. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And, in churches as well. I know you were saying you would find a church. Yeah. Eh, the church, and I didn't know I'm go, I will go to find the church. So when you pass, you can know this is the church, this is not church. And then when I see the church, I want to, I must want to go to ask the help by the church. Yeah. Another one, there was helping me. Another one, yeah. there was a little to help me. How did you know to come here? Why, why did you want to get to this refugee camp, to Maritane? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know. I'm. 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 I'm not go. I'm not praying to come in Mozambique. So I must need to run from far from my country because the situation situation security must have it. Yeah. All right. So it it wasn't necessarily. It was just a matter of running. So when you're coming from Burundi, it's through. Uh, Tanzania and then into into Mozambique. That was the that's the path you took. But a year later, then you found yourself here. And in the beginning, it was difficult for you here in the camp. The beginning is very difficult. Before, when I reached in Mozambique in Ampola, I think the police they catch me. They, they, after they catch me, they take me in marathon the first time. Okay. And then you know the life is very difficult. But the uh, I, I want to say you and Isiel, they, uh, they are helping me until today. I'm still under them. Good. Good. I'm glad. And you're married now and you've got children. How, yeah. how many children? Three. you got three children. Yes. And what I love, and we're going to do it now, is that you have this the school that you've got yeah. where you teach your Burundians, the young Burundi children and, and everybody, the community, yeah. the culture and the dance and the drumming. So Burundi is still in your heart. Yeah. Burundi still is in my heart. It's in my heart because it's, the, it's my country. And then when is your country supported to like it, to love your country? And then is it the one who make me to to choose this these children to to teach them about this culture of Burundi because more children they are born outside of the country they are don't know Burundi how easy yeah. so is the one who make me to teach them the culture the flag of Burundi is what so let's can we go inside we'll meet them and this is Burundi and Goma that's the name of your yeah, your group how many how long have you been going how long for uh, to teach them? Yeah. I, I, five years ago. Five years? Yeah. And the one thing about you is you've got this jump. They, you've got to see the jump. It'll happen. Yeah, to jump is very easy. Yeah. You're supposed to train. When you train even this kid, this kid when they are, they are grow up small, they will, they will jump. No, okay. They will jump. jump. So he tried to show me how to jump yesterday. And the, the, the training of jumping is to touch your toes. So I'm there. So I can, I can, oh, no, I can't. I, no, no, yeah, yeah, it's very, you, you're going you're gonna to show us, you're going to show okay. us. So good luck. We're dying to hear. Go get ready yeah. and you start. So this is uh, Burundi and Goma and they're going to perform for us now. And this is just a fantastic, fantastic way to keep the culture alive, to show you that your home country is still in your heart. It doesn't matter where you are. You're a refugee. You're here. Who knows if you'll ever go home. But you're born in your country and that's your country of origin and that's where you feel you belong but 
this group, they're here, they're keeping their spirit of Burundi alive. So have a listen and enjoy them.